This week on the Kayak Fishing Show, I'm hooking up with my good friends Ken Whiting, Howard McKim, and Matt Moyer at the famed Hotel Punta Colorada in Southern Baja. Stay tuned, it's gonna be wild. At the forefront of any sport, you inevitably find someone pushing the limits. While kayak fishing has been exploding in popularity, Jim Sammons has been doing just that. Uh, yeah, look at these. Nice. From the seat of his ocean <laughs> kayak, Jim challenges the world's top game fish and puts his kayak fishing skills to the ultimate test. Never fought a kayak, have you, fish? From freshwater to saltwater, Jim's mission is simple to discover the best fishing destinations in the world and prove that anything is possible from a kayak. This week, Jim Sammons puts together a crew of hardened kayak anglers to brave the fish-filled waters of Baja, Mexico. The mission? To catch marlin from a kayak. Eight years ago, Jim made history when he hooked, fought, and landed a marlin from his ocean kayak drifter. Since then, Jim has been running kayak fishing trips down the East Cape of Baja in partnership with the Hotel Punta Colorada. In that time, he's had 23 guests come down and join the coveted Kayak Fishing Billfish Club, Although it's probably safe to say that Jim is the most experienced billfish kayak angler, it doesn't mean that catching the monsters is any less exciting. So this time, Jim's assembled a crew of kayak anglers that he knew could help him get the job done. Howard McKim is a legendary kayak angler and guide from Ketchikan, Alaska. Only three years ago, Howard hooked up with a 180-pound halibut while fishing from his kayak. Eight hours later, after an epic battle, he managed to drag it home just to prove what was possible from a kayak. Uh, really, people aren't used to just sitting out there on a little piece of plastic all by themselves. So I think the key to being happy with kayak fishing long term is to take it one little step at a time. Matt Moyer is a lifelong friend of Jim's and a veteran of the East Cape. Already a member of Jim's Kayak Bill Fish Club, the only thing that Matt has to prove is that the first fish wasn't a fluke. I got started through my dad, who's, uh, who passed away five years ago. He had this harebrained idea to get kayaks, so we went out and we got kayaks, and, uh, and I started out at a very young age, and um, that's how I got into kayak fishing. Ken Whiting is a former world champion whitewater kayaker and the author of several books about kayaking technique. Ken is here to put his paddling skills to the ultimate test while taking a crash course on big game kayak fishing. Being in a kayak has it's basically guided my life. So when the whole idea of kayak fishing came around, it, uh, it was just an obvious fit. It was an obvious fit for me. I, I grabbed a rod, went out, caught my first little bass, and that was done. I was, uh, kayak fishing was the next thing for me. Together with the help of local guide Alonzo McLeese, the team will search the blue Baja waters in hopes of hooking up with the next big one. Hotel Punta Colorada is located in the East Cape region of Baja, which is just north of Cabo San Lucas, inside the Sea of Cortez. So we're just near the southern tip, just up inside, a little more protected. The hotel is a small hotel uh, located out on a point. So there's never a whole lot of people. There, we're not near town. We're 15 minutes away from the closest town. 
and there's not a lot of houses or anything else around here so it's a very secluded little spot once you're here you really don't go anywhere you just kind of hang out get into the the Baja frame of mind and relax and fish and relax and fish <laughs> well our typical day here in the East Cape is uh, you know we get up fairly early you know, it's kind of that Baja mentality it's a little more relaxed so we get up about six o'clock have a big full breakfast um, hit the water around seven o'clock we meet our ponga we always have uh, boats with us on the water on my trips just as a safety thing and as as well as giving us the range to get out after uh, fish greater distances. Basically, it just means more time fishing and less time paddling. After the team settles into this fisherman's paradise, they rush to the water to jig up plentiful Humboldt squid to use as bait, a delicacy almost no sea creature can pass up. Got a nice little hammerhead shark on here. My first hammerhead ever. First fish of the day. Finally got out even with the wind and choppy water. Man, this fish is really heavy. He's a lot heavier than he looks. He's really been pulling hard for his size. Kind of like that. Oh, we are at Fraley's in Baja. And I just caught my first rooster fish off a of mega bait jigging deep. We weren't supposed to really catch him that way, but uh, it hit hard and, and it pulled hard. You know, just that one day sure was spectacular, and I think people get a, a, a glimpse just from that one day of what an amazing place this is. Yeah! Sweet bean! Trolling live bait is one of the most effective ways of catching fish. And that's what Jim is looking at today in Ex Officio's Kayak Fishing Tip of the Week. If you want to fish live baits, of course, you're going to need a way to carry those baits on your kayak. If you're fishing for small fish, walleye, that sort of thing, and using small minnows, you can generally just keep those in some kind of a container on the back of your boat. But for your larger baits like mackerel, sardine, mullet, that sort of thing, you're going to want a full circulating live bait well like I have here with this Bristol Bay from Shimano. Now when I'm trolling large baits down in Baja, I like to use a circle hook. That's going to make sure that I get a good hook set in the corner of the mouth. Now I attach that to my Seaguar fluorocarbon leader with a small loop knot. The reason I do that is that allows the bait to have a little bit more motion, giving it that natural presentation. I'll put that circle hook either sideways across the nose of the bait or in the back of the collar, just behind the head, usually even with the top of their gill plate. Now when trolling live baits, you want as natural a presentation as possible, which in most cases means trolling very slowly. I generally say that you can't troll too slow. As long as your bait isn't passing you and you have a slight tension on the line, you're going at a good speed. I'll usually have my rod in a Scotty Rodmaster II rod holder just behind me within easy reach. Presentation isn't everything though. Your bait has to have a natural feel when the fish picks it up, otherwise it may spit it out. A natural feel means the game fish shouldn't feel any resistance when it grabs the bait, so that it'll run with it and swallow it, which gives you a much better chance to get the set on the hook. A great way to get this natural feel is by using a conventional or bait casting reel with a reel out of gear and the clicker on. Now, if you haven't used conventional reels with clickers before, basically what that means is you have this little button here that you slide in. So the reel is out of gear, clicker on, so when the fish picks it up, it can take line, but that clicker is putting enough pressure there to hold your bait in place. So with the clicker on, I'll hear it when a fish hits. I'll just set the paddle across my lap, reach back, grab the rod, turn off the clicker, throw the reel in gear. All of that is giving the, the fish enough time to swallow that bait. Throw it in gear, and with a circle hook, don't set the hook, just wind as fast as you can. Now, a lot of times, I'll be trolling really large bait, big mackerel or really large mullet. A lot of times, the clicker on the reels just isn't quite strong enough to hold that bait in place. Because of that, I really like to use a lever drag reel. With a lever drag reel, you can just bump the reel slightly into gear to hold the big bait in place, but it's still loose enough so the fish can hit and run away with it. Another trick, if you don't have a lever drag reel or a reel with a strong enough clicker, 
is to wrap a rubber band around the rod and the line. This will hold the line tight to the rod until the fish hits it. When a fish hits it, it burns through the rubber band. So there's a few tips on helping you troll with live bait. I hope it'll make your catch counts go up. Until next time, I'm Jim Sammons, and that's your ex officio kayak fishing tip of the week. The wind is a little bit much for us today. Wind's not too much for me. It's too much for him. <laughs> we were all pretty busy getting ready for the trip. And so we, uh, one of the things we didn't happen to check was the weather before coming down. <laughs> and it wasn't until we were in LA meeting Jock for, uh, for the last leg of the flight down here to Baja where we realized that there was a, a hurricane all on its way. Pretty much it was at that point, it was angled directly to where we were going in Baja. So that wasn't a great, uh, wasn't a great start. What do you say, Jim? I said it's a, a mite breezy. <laughs> Winds really picked up. They're blowing about 20, 25 knots. And we spent a lot of time hanging out, watching the seas build, did a lot of great kayak surfing because we couldn't do any fishing. There was some beautiful swell coming in, which made for some great surfing. I gotta say, we always had fun. I mean, the surfing, I mean, I had more fun surfing out here than I've ever had out here. They're the best surf we've ever had out front. So just surfing the kayaks out in front was just a blast. shut down a little bit because of weather, but made the most of those days surfing and having fun. Didn't get quite as much fishing as we hoped, but had an excellent time on the water. Uh, we made the best of it. We had an awful lot of fun surfing the kayaks. That was such a blast getting out there and, and surfing with Ken, and again, learning a lot more about boat handling from Ken. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in the surf, but just watching him, him handle the kayak in the surf, I learned a lot. So we had a couple of fun days of that and then got kind of blown off the water early because of the, the wind came up thinking, oh, well, tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit better. Well, it got worse and uh, we didn't get on the water for four more days. So basically we went from scheduled to fish seven days to fishing two and a half. Although not for everyone, the ability to launch your kayak in surf zones will give you access to prime fishing spots. So that's what Ken is looking at today in Ocean Kayaks, kayaking tip of the week. If you want to launch in a surf zone, the first thing you need to do is stow your gear. You have to assume that you're going to flip because trust me, it happens to the best of us. And as Murphy's Law would have it, it's going to happen when you get lazy and leave your gear on the deck where you can lose it. The first thing to understand is what beaches are easiest to launch from. This is a tricky question to answer because it really depends on the size of the waves rolling in. If you're on a steeper beach, the waves will tend to roll in, hitch up quickly, and then dump hard. And if you're in the zone where it's dumping, you're gonna get hit hard, and the chances of swimming are pretty high. On beaches with more gradual slopes, the waves will build more slowly and break gradually. These beaches tend to be the better choice. When it comes to actually launching, remember that waves come in sets. They're not rolling in consistently at the same size, and so take your time. Watch the sets come through, and then wait for a bigger set of waves to roll through before going for it. When that time comes, grab the bow of your kayak and pull it into knee-deep water, keeping it pointed directly into the oncoming waves. As soon as the next wave passes, 
hop onto your kayak as quickly as possible and start paddling. If a wave that's coming at you is breaking, keeping your boat pointed directly at that oncoming wave becomes that much more important. You'll also want to hit that breaking wave with a little extra speed, so take a couple of good hard strokes going into it and then plant a last stroke into the wave as it hits you. This last stroke will not only help pull you through the wave, but it'll help keep you balanced. So there you have it, some important things to keep in mind when you're launching and surf. Until next time, I'm Ken Whiting, and that's your Ocean Kayak Kayaking Tip of the Week. With only a day left in Baja, Jim Sammons and the rest of the team are dying for the weather to break so that they can continue on their mission to catch billfish from a kayak. After four days of heavy winds, the guys finally get the news that they've been waiting for. It's time to fish. With cautious spirit, they troll live bait for hours, far from the coastline. Alonzo knows where the marlin hide, but there's no telling how they will act after four days of wind. There are very few hints to help guide him today. The bait fish stay low and the sky is free from birds. It's our first day, first day on the water and uh, I think this is the, we were on the, on the shore for three days. Wind's still blowing, but uh, we just had to get back here. We were jonesing to catch some fish and um, right now I'm, I'm not caught in anything. Alonzo has been doing this type of guiding and fishing for many years and has learned to trust his instincts. His practice eye spots a flying bill a short distance off, and he shouts to the anglers to move their bait into its path. Calm before the storm, I think we're in. That's what I like to hear. When Howard says it's fishy, I believe him. Howard is just so casual, so calm, and he just was fighting the fish. I was like, oh, he's got a little fish, and then all of a sudden, wham! <laughs> This huge marlin comes dancing across the water, and I mean, my arms just went straight into the air. I couldn't believe it. My jaw dropped. Just like that is the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. Armed with only 20-pound test on a musky rod, Howard somehow manages to keep the mammoth marlin at only a stone's throw. But it's quickly dragging him out into the Sea of Cortez and deeper water. The rest of the crew struggle to keep up, when suddenly the incredible happens. Matt's rod bends in half as another massive marlin grabs hold. Now the mayhem begins in earnest. The wheels ain't catching, they're just spinning. It was just crazy because uh, Howard was already on that uh, 250 plus pound blue yeah. marlin and I was kind of racing to kind of get out there. And as I was paddling, all of a sudden I hear the splashing behind me. Oh man, this is insane. <laughs> Pretty tight, huh? Oh man, that's our, uh, that's our first double hookup. And we all started out with a 10 day run. My first marlin from a kayak, and I think the most amazing part's when you don't know what you have at first, and then see it jump out of the water right in front of you, and uh, definitely know you're in for a long battle then. I think mine went about four and a half hours, maybe a little more, I don't really know, but um, several hours there where you're just hanging on back and forth, and not too dramatic, but the beginning and the ending is out of control, and uh, more than I ever hoped for. It's not often when I'm down here that I get to fish. I'm usually guiding clients and spending time with them, so I don't get a lot of time to fish. I'm really looking forward to fishing on this trip, and basically got about two hours of fishing on the first day because uh, of Howard hooking up, and then Maddie hooking up, and me feeling like, you know, this is still my spot. It's still my job to kind of help them out with those bigger fish, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Just chasing my heart. <laughs> But I'm feeling now like
like I'm falling apart. I should listen to you. When I had the chance. I have a lot of days where I think I'll never forget this day, and that's always a sure sign for me that it was a good story or a great day and had an all-day fight. And uh, that would, right now, that's <laughs> definitely on the top of the memory. Good job, Howard. That was awesome. Was a great fight. I've been trailing down. In Baja, we need not only protection from the sun, but we need clothing that's nice and light when we're paddling, and it'll dry quickly. Ex Officio does an unbelievable job of making highly functional clothing, but also clothing that looks great. The Tripper shirts are particularly nice because they're very lightweight and keep you cool when it's real hot out, and they also dry extremely quickly. The Troopers are also really nice to help keep you cool because of the mesh ventilation in the back. You can see Ex Officio's full line of clothing at exofficio.com. Only a few kayak anglers have fought or landed billfish from kayaks. 23 of those lucky ones did it here in Baja with Jim Sammons, and their stories are forever captured and displayed on the wall of Hotel Punta Colorada. Howard's fight with the monster blue is another great story for the wall, and Matt's beaming face will make its second appearance. Ken, on the other hand, didn't catch a marlin, but he did catch the big game kayak fishing bug, and he's already vowed to come back and try it again. Next week on the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Sammons, Jim travels to Canada's capital city of Ottawa. Here he's going to hook up with world champion whitewater kayakers Brendan Mark and Ken Whiting to put his skills to the ultimate test, whitewater kayak fishing. If you're interested in learning to kayak fish or taking a kayak fishing trip with Jim Sammons in San Diego or Baja, visit kayakforfish.com for more information. <laughs> <laughs>